Hey, thanks for joining me today. This is Pastor Lafayette. We're in Luke chapter 5, and it's Monday. Uh, we just finished where Jesus had uh, a man had asked him, Lord, if you if you want to, if you're willing, would you heal me? Jesus said, of course I'm willing. It's always the Lord's will to heal. And then uh, verse 16, we ended where he went out and prayed, and Jesus lived a life of prayer. Uh, it's been said that Jesus' life was a life of prayer with miracles sprinkled in the middle. Uh, should be the same for us. We're at verse 17. Now it happened on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem. So here they are. They're waiting to find out. They're, they want to hear what this guy's teaching because he's been uh, more than likely taking people from listening to them. There's jealousy there. Uh, Maybe even conviction, because maybe he said things that are actually contrary to what they've said. <clears throat> so they're sitting by. They want to listen to what's going on this time. But notice the next part. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. That that means that he it's ready. I mean, it's, it's not a lack of power there. Verse 18. Then behold, men brought on a bed a man who was paralyzed, whom they sought to bring in and lay before him. And when they could not find how they might bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the housetop and let him down with his bed through the tiling into the midst before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said to the man, Man, your sins are forgiven you. And the scribes and Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said to them, Why are you reasoning in your hearts, which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you? or to say, rise up and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Immediately he rose up before them, took up what, had, what he had been lying on, and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed, and they glorified God, and were filled with fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. So power of God was there. Jesus was there. They couldn't get in. They tore open the roof to get this, this person in. So Jesus, of course, heals like he always does. You'll never read a passage where he does not heal. Of course, at first he says, your sins are forgiven. They, they, them not knowing who Jesus is, says that he can't forgive sins, but uh, Jesus makes his point by saying, you know, what's easier to say? Then he proves, he says, listen, I don't just talk. I do. So rise, take up your bed, and walk. That's one thing about Jesus. He didn't waste time with his words. He did. If he said it, he did it. Um, verse 27 after these things, he went out and saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at the tax office. He said to him, follow me. And so he left all, rose up, and followed him. Question in verse 28 for you and I is this. What will we leave? What will we leave to follow, follow the Lord? Uh, do we want to hold on to everything? Are there things we're willing to let go of? And when he calls us deeper... Will we let let go of it? Will we listen? Will we even turn our back, uh, and not necessarily turn our back, but but will we say goodbye to family and friends, if necessary, to follow the Lord somewhere else, some some other place, some distant land? What are we willing to do to follow Him? Verse twenty nine. Then Levi gave him a great feast in his own house, and there were a great number of tax collectors and others who sat down with him. And their scribes and their Pharisees complained against his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus answered and said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have come to call the righteous, or not to, I've come not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Jesus came for everyone. It's just that the Pharisees and scribes didn't realize that they were sinners. 
they thought they were righteous. But Jesus came for everyone. They're always looking for something to complain about. Everything that Jesus did, he talked wrong, so they're waiting to catch him in his speech. He said something to a man who was wrong, and so they want to accuse him of that. He heals on the Sabbath, and they accuse him of healing on the Sabbath. He, he uh, has lunch with tax collectors, people who are sinners, and they complain about that. My friend, if you're going to live right for the Lord, you're always going to have someone who's going to complain about you. Now, I'm not talking about if you're sinning, if you're doing things that are actually morally wrong. But if you're going to live right for the Lord, if you're going to live right for God, there's always going to be someone complaining about you and what you're doing, what you've done. It's just going to be that way. You need to know this, though. You need to know who you serve, and you need to know that what you're doing is pleasing to Father. He's the one that we have to please in this war, in this life. Just know that no matter what happens, no matter how perfect you may be, you couldn't be any more perfect than Jesus. And he drew criticism all the time. Criticism comes with the territory of Christianity. It really does. Father, help us to not let criticism ruin our efforts to serve you. No matter what men may say, say against us, Father, let us stand strong and true and serve you with a pure heart. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thanks for joining me today. Bye-bye.